Merlin, my parrot, which is right outside that window in the patio. He'll be coming inside soon. I'll set up a cage right here for him. But, uh, because it's getting cold. But, uh, he's already picking up on the noises that the puppy made the very first night. One night of whining for the crate training, which Ava has not whined since. But, uh, the first night, it was all night. I didn't get a wink of sleep. And I stuffed towels under my door, but... I left her in the kitchen in her crate, and then I went to bed in my room and closed the door. Now, the second night, she whined a teeny little bit, and as soon as she heard my door close, she stopped. And then the third night, not a peep until I woke up in the morning and let her out. And uh, one of my things is this glove. She loves it, and it keeps my hands from being shredded. And she can bite as hard as she wants. And, uh, if she growls or gets too aggressive, I'll, I'll go limp, you know, like I pretend like it hurt. And, uh, that's only if she makes like that vicious growl sound, which is actually kind of frightening, to be honest with you. She's potty trained at seven weeks. Not necessarily pee trained. She'll pee if you're not paying attention. You know what I mean? She'll tinkle. But uh, she's getting better at releasing puddles instead of little, you know what I mean? Like little sprays, little trickles. I've got to say that this Catahoula puppy is the most amazing little creature. Pretty easy to... Uh, get used to stuff because I put this collar on it's really oversized so she can't choke herself it could, it'll pull off before it hurts her and she'll grow into it and then be completely used to it she scratches at it she doesn't like it but that's only once or twice a day now I trimmed the very very tips of her nails off because they were so sharp as catahoulas are known for their long nails and their strong fingertips they if you can see she grabs and grips she's not doing it yet but she'll grip she'll hold on to and grip like a hand she grabs and uses those nails that's for climbing trees and pulling hogs down to the ground she won't be pulling hogs down but she'll be climbing trees i got a lot of coons and ringtail cats out here she'll be probably treeing those guys in no time but as far as this Catahoula goes, temperament, personality, I've never been around an animal that is so empathetic to what you want. I mean, if she's on the couch when I walk away, whatever it is I got to do, go to the bathroom, prepare a cup of tea, whatever, she'll act like she's going to jump off the couch and follow me. But if I just look at her and just look at her, this look like, don't you dare, she turns around and immediately goes to playing around with something that's on the couch with her, whether it be her favorite blanket, that orange little bone thing there that I got at the dollar store, or the glove, which I usually don't let her play with unless my hand's inside it, you know? And I'm not going to let her play with too much leather stuff because that teaches your dog to uh, destroy leather goods, you know what I mean? Like, Things like uh, your, your shoes and your belts and your wallet. So um, get them off the leather as soon as they're done teething. Yeah, but Catahoula's, man, they're just so easy to train. And, and they're so obedient and sweet and loving. All you got to do is wear them out. That's the key. Anybody that has anything negative to say about this breed, they just got to wear them out. You know, wear them out. Just make them tired. And they'll, they'll sleep the rest of the day. Yeah, they will. Wear you out, huh? Just, as soon as you wake up from your power naps, wear you out again. Just play with you until you can't play anymore. And the trick behind a good night's sleep for both of you, no matter what time it is and no matter how tired you are, that dog needs to be played with right before bedtime. And they will conk out in their crate. And you probably want to continue that method of separating you and the dog for about a year until crate training is completely full, as in full with all of the things you're going to use your crate for, as in when you go to work, when you have to go see somebody that doesn't like dogs or whatever. 
someplace you got to go where you can't bring your loyal companion with you. And in those cases, you got to put your wolf in its den. Dogs still share, it's crazy, but they share 98% of their genetic code with their most close relative canine, the gray wolf or the white wolf, which pretty much originated. Uh, I think we believe the white wolves were Asian. And I think the Saluki comes soon after that. But uh, most dogs were work dogs. They had an important role to serve within their family groups. Their noses are wet, usually during the day and when they're active, because they sweat through their nose. And that moisture on their nose also helps them to understand the smells in their environment. They also sweat through their paws. That's it. That was the only places they sweat. And if that's not working, they'll pant. <laughs> And their tongue will flick around. That means they're really warm. That's not healthy. You don't want to see your dog doing that. Now, panting from running hard is different than panting from being thirsty. So if there's no physical exhaustion and the dog is panting, like, for example, in a hot summer day, you see a dog in a car with the windows up and he's panting, that dog wasn't running around. So he's not tired. He's freaking dying. You know what I mean? Teething is an interesting thing because they will rip you to shreds if you let them. They can't help it. They're trying to understand the strength of their jaw and they're trying to understand what pressure they can exude onto you before you whelp and say that hurt and what they need to have for killing something in the wild. We like to put a lot of things on our dogs, love and all that kind of stuff. But the majority of why a dog is so loyal to humans is because we provide them with food and shelter. And those are extremely important. And these dogs, domesticated ones, probably couldn't survive too long or at least don't want to have to work that hard to survive in the wild. So having a human companion provides them with square meals and a nice, safe, wonderful place to sleep. And in return for that, your dog will provide you loyalty, will protect you to the death because it knows it won't live without you or have to work too hard to do it. So it will defend you from anything and it will work itself until it can't do its job anymore. That's how loyal they are. She's still experimenting and cleaning herself for seven weeks. That's pretty good. Very fast learners. Even though Catahoulers are known for remaining a puppy for an extra year. Watch out now, clumsy. You're going to fall off the back couch again. She will not be allowed on the bed probably for the first year. She's actually never even been in my bedroom. The only places this dog has been is this living room couch that's covered with blankies. That will be hers in the future. And the kitchen, which is a pretty big kitchen. And uh, I just used big Amazon cardboard boxes to block up the doorway and threw a blanket over it. She doesn't think she can get through it. And then, uh, but I haven't really, she doesn't really run around in there too much, but that's where her food is. So she does, when we open the front door, she'll run out and she has free reign of the front yard, which she's only used about 10% of and uh, runs and trips and stumbles over things in the yard and smells the rabbits. I have a lot of wild rabbits running around here. Um, I also have an African gray parrot on the porch, as we talked about, so she knows about that smell too. And she'll beeline it after she tinkles or poos and she'll just run right in the house and go straight. If I leave a little doorway, she'll go straight by sliding the boxes to the side a little bit. She'll straight to her food and water bowl. She'll sniff her food bowl and go right to the water. In her water, I put a drop or two of colloidal silver. That click noise was my stereo shutting off. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a sweet little puppy. They're such good dogs. Notice no sound. Very, very unvocal. Only when absolutely necessary. And that usually is separation. That's one of the only negatives that comes with being uh, one dog, one owner. Meaning, you know, the family environment is actually terrible for training because everybody's given the dog misinformation. One person likes the dog to do this, the other person doesn't. So the dog just 
freaking doesn't learn how to listen to anybody because it doesn't have anybody to listen to because everybody wants something different from it. But on a one-on-one situation, that is completely different. Your dog becomes extremely empathetic and almost can tell what you want just by what you're feeling. And that's the truth. They can sense your needs and your facial expressions tell them a lot. And that's the most beautiful thing about raising a puppy on a one-on-one, meaning a girl with her dog and a, a boy with his dog, with no one else, you know, there. <clears throat> like in my situation, probably. The negative, though, that comes from that, and it's a big negative, is the separation anxiety syndrome, which is the dog is so attached to you, and because there aren't multiple family members to keep him entertained, the second you leave that dog's side, bam, it's upset and will start crying or whining or be destructive. Now, the key behind Catahoulas, which are not food motivated, this isn't the type of dog that's going to do things for you just because you give it a treat. Food is the least important thing to this breed. It will eat and then get back to whatever it was doing. It doesn't loiter around the food bowl. It does not care about food. Food is kind of like just that source, kind of like that friend you have that works all the time. You know, he'll eat in the car on his way to work. I'm like, whoa, man, food is important to me. I like to take time out and enjoy what I'm eating. Some people and some dogs aren't like that. And Catahoulas were bred to be that way, so that wouldn't have to be a crutch in their training or anything. They just get straight to work. Their reward and how you reward them is praise. So they do it for you. And that that seems like a crazy thing to breed into a dog to make it want to be that way. But in the end, that one-on-one creates an incredible bond that way. But you got to deal with that separation anxiety. So you got to keep them busy. You got to run them ragged so they're so tired that they don't even know, wow, her jaws are strong even at seven weeks. I mean, she's biting through these gloves and hurting my fingers. Not the teeth, the jaw strength, like crushing strength. It's crazy. Anyway, it's a 12-minute video on my new puppy, Catahoula Ava, named after Ava Gardner. The one that got away in Frank Sinatra's life. What else would you expect from Sinatra Kennedy, huh? She's also uh, Eve, is her middle name. Ava Eve, after Adam and Eve. Yes. All right. You want to go play outside a little bit? Come on, let's go outside. Let's go outside. All right. <laughs> they are wonderful, wonderful dogs. Just so, so sweet and obedient and desperate to make you happy. And I highly recommend getting yourself one of these high quality leather ranch hand gloves just specifically for the purpose of the dog to chew on. But you want to get your dog, I will repeat, you want to get your dog off of leather things as soon as possible. So rawhide and leather and things like that, you don't want that. You really don't. You want toys and Kongs and things like that that are very easily identifiable to the dog so the dog knows that they are his or hers to play with and do whatever they want with. And of course, you never, ever, ever use negative reinforcement. You can't get mad at your dog. They won't understand that. And a lot of people don't understand that. You don't get mad at them for the things they do wrong. You ignore them for the things they do wrong. Walk away, go in the other room, let them whine, whatever. And you praise them for the things that you do like that they do. And never ever scold, never ever physically harm your animal. That's the worst thing you can do. And it's totally in betrayal of the trust that they have for you. If you're the type of person that's going to hit or injure an animal because it makes you upset, you really don't need to be having a pet of any kind. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Enjoy your Catahoula puppy. Or enjoy your adult. You're wonderful dogs. All dogs are wonderful. All dogs are beautiful. All dogs are loyal. If you treat them with respect and dignity and you love them and provide them with a fair amount of attention every day and food and water, they'll do anything for you. Anything.